Unit 2, Module 5, Components of Fashion. Unit Objectives. By the end of this unit, students will be able to describe the different components of fashion such as silhouette, color, texture and details. Also identify the implementation of components of fashion in the current fashion industry. A fashion design is more complex than what meets the human eye. We witness a finished product that is striking and pleasing to look at. Now let us take a closer look and break down these pleasing outfits. We will find out what the designer has had to consider making this design a success. Designing an outfit or the entire look is more complex than what meets the human eye. We witness a finished product that is striking and pleasing to look at. When we take a closer look, breaking down the pleasing outfits, we will find out what the designer had had to consider to make this design a success. We can see few images from Amazon India Fashion Week. When we look at these fashion images, there are various components that go into contributing the whole look. We will look at each component in detail. Take a moment to observe each and every part of these outfits from spring summer 2018 fashion and let us dive into detail in the lesson. Components of fashion. The following are four components that comprise fashion design. Silhouette, color, texture and details. Silhouette. Silhouette is a French term which means the image of a person, an object or scene represented as a solid shape of a single color, usually black, its edges matching the outlines of the subject. Because a silhouette emphasizes the outline, the word has also been used in the field of fashion and fitness to describe the shape of a person's body or the shape created by wearing clothing 
of a particular style. The term silhouette in fashion refers to the line of a dress or the garment's overall shape. Silhouettes can be used to emphasize and alter a human's shape to create a flattering illusion. Different dress silhouettes are designed to flatter different body types as well as meet the dress codes for different events. Understanding different silhouettes can help you find the most flattering one for your body type. Take a time to observe the silhouettes so in the images here. Types of silhouettes. Three basic silhouettes form the basis for all clothing and are considered long run fashions or in other words classic silhouettes. These cycle over a period of years. They are the bell silhouette with outer form rounded to waistline. The straight hangs straight from the shoulders and the bustle back silhouette. A line and V shape are modifications of the straight silhouette. Let us see some examples. On the left, we see an outfit with bell silhouette. It is an off white wool crepe off the shoulder dress with pearl. On the right is bell shaped ball gowns. On the left we can see a light beige straight silhouette dress. On the right we see a maternity and nursing straight silhouette baby shower formal lace dress. If you can recall what we learnt in unit 1, straight silhouettes was a raging trend in the 1920s and was called flapper fashion. Contemporary extensions of the basic silhouette. Those are sheath silhouette, A line silhouette, straight column silhouette, hourglass silhouette, bell silhouette, trumpet silhouette, shoulder wedge silhouette. Trapeze silhouette, extreme volume silhouette, asymmetrical silhouette, empire silhouette and egg shaped silhouette. Sheath silhouette. Sheath silhouette 
is a form of fitting silhouette from the top to the bottom. The way the silhouette embraces the body makes it an exacting style for those without a perfect figure. A defined waist is a criterion for looking good in this silhouette. This style is typically fitted with slits in the hem to ease movements. Sheath dresses are prime examples of this silhouette. Fitted jeans, pencil skirts are all other examples of this silhouette. Let us have a look at some of the sheath silhouettes. On the left, what you see is Giovanni evening dress altar, altar neck sheath silhouette with a side slit. On the right is a wedding dress in sheath silhouette. A-line silhouette. This silhouette is tailored in the bodice and flares slightly in the skirt, making it look like the alphabet capital A. The A-line silhouette works sound for most people. A garment in this silhouette is slim at the top and widens towards the hem in a steady manner. It soothes out awkward lines and curves of the body and hence flatters most body shapes. Some examples of the A-line silhouette. The picture on the left is an outfit by Giovanni with an A-line silhouette. It is a floral printed A-line dress. On the right is a vintage retro dress again with the A-line shape. Straight column silhouette. The dress which belongs to this silhouette will have a rectangular shape as it has nearly the same measurement for the bust, waist and hem. It is also referred to as rectangular silhouette or tubular silhouette. A shift dress is an example of this type. A person with a thick waist and wide hips will love the silhouette as it hides their flaws very comfortably. In a gown, this silhouette may also show up fitted in the bodice. It will be added with a column style skirt without any flare going straight down to the floor. This silhouette is very often seen as an element in summer clothes. Clothes of this silhouette is made with fabric which drapes very well and which are lightweight.
Some examples can be seen here. On the left is a ruffled chiffon informal wedding dress in straight column style. On the right is a lace column dress with eyelash lace trimmed straps. Please note that in these examples, the upper torso is still fitted, but the straight column continues from the waist. Hourglass silhouette. This silhouette is characterized by fitted waistline. It is a very prevalent silhouette that accentuates the curves of the feminine figure. You can design the silhouette with the help of waistbands, belts or darts. Corset tops and bustiers with a flared skirt can emphasize the waist and create the silhouette. This is the most sought after of all the silhouettes. Unfortunately, for some, the hourglass silhouette is mostly suitable for people with a narrow waist. You need a somewhat slim waist to do justice to this silhouette. A pear shaped body suits this silhouette more than an apple body shape or an inverted triangle provided the wearer does not have a very thick waistline. Have a look at few examples here. The picture on the left shows the contour line of dresses creating an hourglass silhouette without the confinement of corsetry, which means the model is not wearing a corset to define the shape of the silhouette. On the right is another example of an hourglass silhouetted dress. Bell silhouette. Bell or ball gown silhouette is fitted in the bodice till the waist and then flares liberally to the hem to make a bell shaped skirt. This silhouette is typically found in traditional wedding dresses and is a very popular choice of young woman about to be married. The flare of the skirt in the silhouette is mostly achieved by layers of fine fabric. A petticoat with many frills of crinoline under the gown also aids to create this silhouette. Let us have a look at some examples here. As mentioned earlier, bell shaped silhouettes are a common stay in wedding dresses and ball gowns. Have a look at this dress which is elegant with a narrow mid and upper section with a bill, big bell shaped bottom. On the right is an outfit from designer Victoria Beckham. It is a pleated shoulder bell dress. Trumpet silhouette.
this silhouette which is also called the mermaid silhouette is an attractive one. This trumpet silhouette is very similar to the sheet silhouette. The difference being that it flares generously from the knees like a ball gown. The snug fitting of this silhouette till the knees makes it very difficult for movement. But it is undoubtedly a very beautiful silhouette and hence worth the sacrifice. Please find a few examples here. The picture on the left is from Maury Lee. It is a bridal gown. Please note how this silhouette widens from the knees up to the bottom, giving the impression of a mermaid. A similar example can be seen on the right. It is a racial Allen dress which is strapless, has a straight neckline and a trumpet silhouette. Shoulder wedge silhouette. This is a silhouette with prominence on the shoulder. Shoulder wedge silhouette is made so with the help of design additions like shoulder pads or with sleeve types like the butterfly sleeves or puff sleeves giving extra emphasis to the shoulders. This is also called power dressing. This silhouette comes with an almost masculine width to the shoulder and offers a very thin look to the hips and waist. The silhouette could be suitable for a person with a slouchy figure as it gives a square and healthy look to the shoulder and makes the wearer look younger. This silhouette is very much suited for someone with a thick waist as the silhouette creates the look of a narrow bottom compared to the top. You will have to make sure that the shoulder shape and size is in proportion to the wearer's size. Most tailored coats have a shoulder wedge silhouette, a raglan sleeve and its variations like the bat wing sleeves and dolman sleeves will also create a wedge shape as it adds bulk under the arm. You can take a moment to reflect upon the different types of sleeves that we learnt. Fabric suited for making garments in this silhouettes are heavyweight fabrics and crisp fabrics like organdy. Knits are good for dolman and raglan sleeved dresses. On the left is a Vince Camuto fox leather trim wedge dress. On the right we can see a dress with shoulder pads similar to a battle suit. In the 1980s this was also called power dressing giving emphasis to the shoulders.
trapeze silhouette. This silhouette is similar to an A-line silhouette but with a more pronounced flare near the hem. It is shaped like a trapezoid or rather a tent. Simply put, it looks like a triangle flaring as it does from under the armhole. The silhouette works as a short dress rather than a full length dress as it can give the figure an overwhelming look. Page 34. The picture on the left shows an outfit in trapeze silhouette. It is from Norte by Marquesa, color blocked silk dress. The picture on the right is from Mark by Mark Jacobs. It is a striped trapeze dress. Extreme volume silhouettes. This is a silhouette mostly seen on long oversized jackets, maxi dresses, capes and wraps. The voluminous silhouette is a most used style in outerwear. The kaftan with many layers of fabric is an example of this silhouette. It is very easy for the figure to be dazed by the volume in this silhouette. The figure of the person is very vital whilst considering the silhouette for a specific person. The picture on the left shows sculptural fashion with a geometric and exaggerated structure. On the right is a similar example. It, it projects a clean look with minimal tailoring with an exaggerated 3D silhouette. Asymmetrical silhouette. This silhouette has a diagonal hemline. This effect can be achieved by varying the colors and fabrics. Other than cutting the hem of the garment, in asymmetrical lines. Asymmetry can be positioned at multiple places to create the required design effect. Asymmetry is found proficiently in both men and women's fashion. Let us have a look at some examples here. The picture on the left shows an outfit with asymmetrical hemline. Please note how at the bottom the hemline ends on one side at the thighs and on the other side at the ankle. On the right is a black gown in asymmetrical silhouette. It is a black silk gown with asymmetrical peplum. It is from Ralph and Rousseau.
Empire Silhouette. This is a silhouette with a raised waistline that is the waistline is made above the normal waistline or it just starts below the bust. This dress silhouette flares out from under the chest line. This is a most appropriate style for figures with a thick waistline. Usually the effect is achieved by making the dress in two panels. The skirt panel starting just under the chest. Some examples of the empire silhouette. Please note how in the picture on the left, the waistline starts higher than usual and just below the bust. The same is the case with the picture on the right. It is an Alice B. Dazzle V Alter Neckline Empire Waist Chiffon Dress. Egg Shaped Silhouette This silhouette has a shape which is fitted at the top and bottom and is loose in the middle of the figure. The tulip skirt is an example of a garment with an egg shaped silhouette. Dresses in this silhouette are not the most flattering but the directives of fashion sometimes make them popular. Some examples of fashion can be seen here. On the left is the egg shaped silhouette and on the right is an egg shaped silhouette but with less amount of flare. History of Silhouettes Our outfit today says much about who we are, in some cases what we believe in. For some, what they wear is of great importance and to others not so much. But modern women in most western societies have the authority to decide what to wear and how much meaning they assign to what they wear. Some have their own un unique style. In the past, what women wore was how societies wanted them to be seen. Today, women can use fashion to project how they want to be seen. Those ideas and presentations have evolved drastically over the years. By observing how Western and European women's garments have changed tells us quite a bit about women. It shows us how they have changed the society and how they have been changed. Have a glimpse of silhouettes used in the olden days. Nearly until the renaissance era, before existence of the middle class, clothing was seen by the average man or a woman as just a way to cover their bodies. 
garments were boxy and utilitarian and women probably owned just two or three outfits. But slowly, the ideas of the medieval period began to fade away in favor of an age of awareness of art, of science and of beauty. Towards the end of the medieval era, clothing for women of all classes became more colorful and better fitted. Garments of women who were well off became tighter and more fitting. Fabrics like silk, linen and fur set the wealthy apart from the working class. Birth of tailoring and the idea of fashion as a concept emerged. The appearance of tailor as an occupation showed how division of labor was evolving. Gowns were intricately draped in heavy silks. At events, society women wore crinolines, which were side hoops that extended the width of the dress while keeping the front and back relatively flat. This was to achieve a bell shape of flare and was considered fashionable during that period and also marked a women's status in society. These extravagant garments became symbolic of widening class differences, fanning the flames of the French Revolution. On the left is a picture of a crinoline worn by women in the olden days to achieve a flared bell-shaped silhouette. And on the right, we can see the final outcome of the usage of these crinolines. But after the revolution, very few wanted to be associated with the excess of these. So fashion became simpler and less ornamental. A high-waisted silhouette known as the empire style was inspired by Greco-Roman artwork and popularized by Josephine Bonaparte wife of the French emperor. The bodice was fitted until just below the bust when a long gathered skirt was attached. The style represented freedom to many women who were happy to escape heavy and uncomfortable petticoats. Gauzy fabrics gave way to twills and taffeta and heavy weighted hems replaced flowing skirts.
by the 1830s waste lines had again dropped to just above natural position in both europe and united states those with means found it desirable to embrace full bell shaped skirts and bodices laden with underpinnings massive lego mutton sleeves were supported with whale bone and skirts were corded or supported with heavy petticoats In the United States, women adopted the scoop skirted style that remained popular until and beyond the Civil War era. The exaggerated hip structure caused women to become walking hazards, constantly knocking over candles and gas lamps and setting their heavy dresses and wooden skirts on fire. women could actually be swept away by heavy winds and some drowned weighed down by the hoops and stays and heavy fabrics this is in high contrast to the garments assigned to enslaved women of this time they were dressed in clothing made from the most inexpensive cloth available usually coarse uncomfortable and unfeminine to strip females of their agency and identity slave owners would often take away any feminine apparel dressing them in the same clothing as men and cutting off their hair have a look at some of the men and women silhouettes during the victorian period Uh, the photo on the left and the photo on the right shows beautiful hoop skirt dresses In Europe and the US the following decades saw women's skirts become even larger and stiffer with the addition of metal hoops and crinolines boned bodices were creating the newest popular shape emphasizing the rare some attempted to slim their waist to the ideal 16 inches and some even smaller repeated years of corset wearing resulted in broken ribs and shattered rib cages 
damaged and herniated organs or suffocation. Towards the end of the Victorian era, women reformers began to openly oppose these body modifying garments. The S bent corset, considered as a healthy corset, as it removed significant pressure from the abdomen, became popular. It pushed the hip backwards and the chest forward. Separates became popular as detached skirts assisted women in creating this pigeon like silhouette. But things were about to change drastically as World War I began and women were forced to adopt more practical clothing including trousers. These are examples of silhouettes prominent during the 1920s. By the 1920s, women's fashion had undergone a drastic evolution. Short skirt silhouettes were in vogue and androgynous looks became more popular. The flapper with her dropped waistlines, knee length skirts and colourful gathers is a symbol of the roaring 20s era. More women were entering the workplace or simply wanted a less fussy wardrobe and so metal hooks and eyelets, buttons and zippers were substituted in the place of lacings and corsets. In the 1930s, many women wanted a feminine, glamorous look. Parsian designers introduced the bias cut evening gown intended to skim along the body curves. The average American women wardrobe was importantly affected by the Great Depression, but Hollywood promoted this glamorous trend as a kind of an escape. They would exemplify everything that the everyday women wanted but could not achieve. In the days directly following the war, women were eager to embrace feminine fashions again. Young people's income was greater now that the war was over and many designers focused on the youth. Fuller skirts came into fashion again, though the lengths continued to be shorter than in the previous decades. By the 1960s, the girdle had principally been replaced by pantyhose and control top pantyhose for those who wanted a more secure garment. In the images shown here, we can see that the silhouettes resemble 
more of the modern day silhouettes. During the 1960s, women's fashion trends were inclined a great deal towards social movements. Many women wanted to be a fashion forward mix of independent and traditional, like the then first lady Jacqueline Kennedy. Hippie fashion placed more importance on comfort and less importance on expensive fashion. It was fashionable to embrace non-western cultures in fashion and ideology and do less with more. Post the movement, many women's fashion trends grew from the ideas of the women's liberation movement and the cultural norm of women in the workplace. Diane von Fustenberg's wrap dress was a chief for women who needed versatility. Women seeking quality at work sometimes embraced the power suit with a manly edge and large shoulder pads. It was also called power dressing and was very popular during the 1980s. As women's, year, as women's earning potential rose, so did the refusal of hippie styles in favor of powerful, dramatic looks inspired by the decadence of television shows like Dynasty. In the decades that trailed, women continued to use fashion to exhibit confidence and power. The 1980s trend of wearing visible undergarments was a way for women to be empowered by their femininity and sexuality. The same was true in the 90s when the so-called grunge musicians like Kathleen Hanna commanded stages sometimes wearing only slips or nightgowns. Thus we see how silhouettes emerge from the ancient times till today. And now let us look at some modern day examples. On the left, we see Madonna at Diane von Fustenberg's party in her London power suit. On the right is another modern outfit. On the left, we can see examples of 1980s power dressing silhouette with large shoulders. 
on the right are silhouettes from 1993. Page 74. Have a look at some of present day fashion silhouettes. Implementation of silhouettes in current fashion. Let us look at few silhouettes on the runway. On the left is an outfit from Anne Demolista Fall 2018 Menswear Fashion Show. On the right is an outfit from Christian Dreyer Spring 2018 Couture Fashion Show. The picture on the left shows a pencil silhouette dress by Bottega Veneta for fall winter 2017 and 18. On the right is an organic silhouette in a bold graphic print by Maria Conejo. Page 92. Colors. A color that can induce one reaction in one person may evoke the opposite reaction in another due to culture, estuile association or even just personal appearance. Color theory is a science and art unto itself which some build entire careers on as color consultants or sometimes as brand consultants. Knowing the effects color has on a majority of people is an incredibly valuable expertise that designers can master and offer to their clients. Understanding concepts and color terminology. To use color effectively in designs, one needs to know few color concepts as well as some color theory terminology. Something as simple as changing the exact hue or saturation of a color can evoke a completely different feeling. Cultural differences can compound those effects with a hue that is happy and uplifting in one country becoming depressing in another. Texture Fabric or other materials such as trims, findings for clothing and accessories can have a variety of textures all of which can affect the look of a garment or fashion accessory. The weave and texture of a fabric have an impact on the way it drapes which in turn affects the way a garment looks 
when it is worn. Texture constitutes an important chapter in fashion because texture substantially affects the look of the garment, the feel, its lucidity in a way influencing the appearance of the person wearing the garment. Texture is basically connected to the weave of the fabric. Sometimes we can texture the fabric by adding stitch details, pin tucks and embellishments as well. Each fabric has its discrete character and charm, a wise choice of mix and design to fit the silhouette of our body and can result in wonderful fashion. Where is texture found? In the thickness and appearance of fabric. What words describe texture? Loopy, fuzzy, furry, soft, shiny, dull, bulky, rough, crisp, smooth and sheer. Why is texture important in fashion? It can increase or decrease a body size. It can draw added attention to a design. Texture can create illusion. The weave and texture of a fabric have an influence on the way it drapes which in turn affects the way a garment looks when it is worn. Going by the word, texture is surface interest. You can gaily play on your appearance and wisely cover body contours that you do not wish to show. Interestingly, textures have weight size, bulk and light absorbing or reflecting properties. To appear pounds thinner, look for fabrics that are medium to lightweight which are crisp but not stiff. Very stiff fabrics appear to add weight to the body. Examples include linen, twill, gabardine and most double knits and fine wheel corduroy. Dull or matte finish textures absorb light and generally make the figure look smaller. Examples are raw silk, taffeta, gingham, denim, wool jersey, sailcloth, broadcloth and chambre. A smooth texture is slimming and tends to hide figure irregularities. These fabrics will not add apparent weight unless the fabric is thick. Fabric examples include flannel, percale, velveteen, crepe, linen, shantung, seersucker and wool chalice. What we see here on the picture on the left is an organic looking smooth white texture. On the right is a golden metallic textured lapel dress. Creating shapes from texture. Tall people should avoid bulky and weighty textures. The best suited textures for tall people 
are smooth and glossy ones. Crisp textures with tailored cut helps highlight body curves enhancing the overall personality of the individuals. Short people should, should choose from soft and dull textures that will not draw the focus to the body size but will evenly distribute it to aspects as shape and contours. While choosing textures, one should give in to two tests, tactile and visual. Some textures can only be felt, but commonly textures can be distinguished visually. Not all textures that are visually appealing can be worn. The feel of the texture is to be considered to wear or drape attires. If you are not comfortable wearing a certain texture, it will kill the entire look, making it a fashion fox paws. On the left, the image shows a textured gown in deep blush. It is from Elie Saab Kotyo Show. On the right, shows a textured fabric with silicone fragments. The picture on the left shows a mesh fabric top with textured embellishments with beads and 3D applique clusters. The picture on the right shows a menswear jacket with a subtle modern grey texture. The picture on the left is from 2018 Fashion Trends Runway. It shows outfits with plastic texture. The picture on the right shows garments with shine and shimmer. They are known as cycladic te textures. It is from Emilio Pucci 2017-18 fall winter. This picture shows textures achieved by embroidery. The fringes with paisley embellishments are from Emilio Pucci 2017-18 fall winter runway catwalk looks.
details. Different specific rudiments are involved in creating an ensemble. Every design has its own defragmentation aesthetically also psychologically. Sometimes each element can be individually observed or can be perceived harmoniously. These individual elements that give a silhouette or design its form or shape are called details. A design evolves progressively from one through changes in detail. In this outfit shown on the picture on the left, we can see a back yoke embroidered and there is gathering detail at the seam. The embroidery has been done with copper thread. The picture on the right shows a grey blazer with a boutonniere detailing on the collar. Like a, let us look at some more examples of details on garments. In this green outfit shown on the left, the pocket flap detailing, belt detailing all add character to the garment. It is from Alexander McQueen, fall 2018, ready to wear fashion show. On the right is a natural fallen leaves detailing achieved by embroidery by Chanel Fall 2018, ready to wear fashion show. The picture on the left shows a bottom hem gathered detailing from Mother of Pearl at London Fashion Week Fall 2018. The picture on the right shows a ribbed waistband with button detailing on top. Conclusion Therefore, from this module, we have learned about the different components of fashion such as silhouette, color, texture, details and also implementation of these in current fashion. Thank you.